the Shakedown Sound series. In this series, we're going to share with you envelope filters by some of our favorite manufacturers. Join us on this long, strange trip. Shakedown Sound is being brought to you by the Qtron Plus from Electroharmonics, and the Beard is going to tell you about this pedal that is being used by a very popular guitarist playing for a very popular band. <laughs> about it. <laughs> At the moment. Probably several, actually, to be honest. Right. But uh, I'm not sure the whole lineage of the design, but Mike Beagle, who did Mutron, mm -hmm. after he left Mutron, did work for Electroharmonics for a while. And was involved definitely in the Qtron. Not sure how much involved in the Qtron Plus. Pro my guess is he was. Yeah. Before he went back out and started Neutron again. Uh, so his hands are in this. You know, so we're talking very close. They're, they even, in the directions, tell you how to get it to sound like the Neutron 3, the original and stuff like that. Uh, John Mayer for Dead & Co. Mm -hmm. was using this on his board. <coughs> so I've been fighting that cock off ever since you said on well, today's episode yeah <laughs> so, tis allergy season um shakedown sound series so one of the first questions we ask with everyone we do can we get that sound from the do that man mm -hmm. so played with it a little bit dialed it in i guess you be the judge <laughs> <laughs> play that when I watch the edit that that one that note I messed up but <laughs> not gonna do it nope should like all right so yeah we just clicked on so we'll talk more about what happened there with the effects loop and the octave pedal in a little bit but for now I think we exchange cables and jump into it there'll be a slight pop yeah, a very slight pop in this mom and pop shop. By the way, that was the Michael Dolan into the Tyler JT22. Put a card up. Great guitar. Make sure you check that out because Michael Dolan's really cool. All right. So, feature wise, lots of knobs, switches, switches and knobs. Um, if we start all the way to the left, you have a mode knob, low pass, band pass, high pass, and mix, which is like, which is a combination of your dry signal and your band pass. Next one is the response, whether it's fast or slow. We'll show that in a minute, and I think you'll be able to figure that. It's how fast the filter picks up. Um, range um, is high or low. And just real quick, on the range, emphasizes vowel-like sounds in the low position and overtones in the high position. We'll get into that. 
peak is your Q knob. So where you have the peak is kind of where the Q is on the filter. Uh, the mo, what's next? The gain. Mm -hmm. So gain is interesting in that right now gain acts as your sensitivity. But when you switch the boost on, it now acts as a boost and a sensitivity. It actually says, and I just think it's worth reading, um, in normal mode, the gain control acts as a filter sensitivity control and has no effect on the unit's output. In boost mode, the gain controls functions as both volume control and a filter sensitivity control. And then you have the sweep, the up and down sweep. You push it one way and it sweeps up, push it the other way and it sweeps down. And we've just decided not to talk about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just, <laughs> You'll just see what position the knobs we'll just show. The toggles in, you figure it out. Right. So let's leave it in the low pass filter mode. Because that's kind of, I think, where we both like it. Although I'm really getting to the point where I kind of <laughs> like the high pass and the band pass right. a little bit. Right. For some of the fun kind of things. Um, let's start with the response, the slow and the fast. And I think, like, kind of slow space single notes. Okay. Um, if you play a couple and then I'll flip it and then play, you know what I mean? Just because I think that's where you hear it the most. Should you ever play it on my 95 PRS <laughs> standard 24 with dragon pickups through the Tyler 222? Yes. That'd be on great. the bridge pickup? You definitely hear a difference. Yeah. It went, after I read it, mm -hmm. it made more sense to me. <laughs> you know, but you do hear it like the way it attacks. I feel like on slow, there's like a, you hit the note and there's like a, uh, and then it comes up, right. the filter comes in. On fast, I feel like it's right there, right away. Um, I will say this, in the sound from the doodah man, I had it on slow, but the manual says to put it on fast for the like Neutron 3 sound. Mm -hmm. So uh, once again, it's, it's my perception of it, which might not be yours, I guess. <laughs> um, let's do range. Next, did, I, did we talk about the range? Range emphasizes, yeah, vowel-like sounds in the low position and overtones in the high. And it might be good to get some high notes and low notes in there. Um, I'll let you go and then I'll switch it. Actually. Oh yeah, it definitely is. Yeah. And I tried to stay up here, but you know, I'm not sure I gave it the best representation. But um, yeah, I thought it was. Well, that's what I was wondering. Is it is it as noticeable on the low? <laughs> Reminds me of walking in a pair of wet shoes. <laughs> like they're squishing, like it has that little squishy overtone. It definitely, it like, I don't know. It almost kind of like the, uh, it's it's a lot tighter, I guess. So yeah, very vowel like on low, mm -hmm. tighter on the high. I like the low. Um, I guess roll the peak knob around. Okay. 
Uh, let's, I mean, why not? Start with all the way down. And we want the riff or we want chords? I, I, I don't know. I forget, I forget which one we're, okay. gonna get this is gonna get a little punchy um uh, maybe the same thing and we flip the sweep knob okay you know what i mean mm-hmm. <laughs> Were you thinking about Princess Leia again? I was. <laughs> like, pew, pew. Um, and I'm not sure that that's going to sound as as good as it could maybe in some of the other modes. Yeah. So the only other thing that we haven't shown on it is the boost. And the, well, the gain and the boost. So maybe run the gain, take it all the way back, turn it to boost and run it again just to show what that can do. I mean, I'm, I do feel like this one isn't, some of them like really the peak and sensitivity really work hand in hand, but right. I'm not, we haven't moved the gain to find out. So I guess we'll, we'll do that. I didn't run the game the whole way up to 12 because <laughs> you have this little overload yeah. thing down here. And right. so you're supposed to set the Qtron kind of at the point where that overload light comes on when you're playing your loudest notes, mm -hmm. but not on all the time. And so right. once that was kind of on all the time, I was just like, well, there's not, it's not going to sound with good. an amp that doesn't have a lot of headroom because it's a, it's a lower wattage amp right. as well. So, <clears throat> which is, yeah, 22 watt amp right. that we actually turn back. Yeah. From where we normally would run it because this yeah, kind of was driving it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we didn't want it to really break up, especially if it sounds from Dude on Man. We wanted it more. Right. And it probably, stuff. it's probably still breaking up more than we would want it to. All right. But, um, which is probably why Jerry ran a <laughs> 100 watt right. amp made by, um, I was looking at this the other day. It'll come to me. I don't want to say trainer, but I'm making stuff. No, up. no, it's it was it's a really high end power amp. Like if you buy a power uh -huh. amp for your stereo from them, real high end. Um, a Macintosh. Macintosh. Yeah. Is. So look at you. I redeem myself from the trainer to a Macintosh. <laughs> so I think all that's left really is to do that high pass yeah. band pass. So I think what I'd like to do is if it's all right with you. Go through kind of everything again, but without all the pauses. So you can maybe play the single note stuff or whatever, 
And I'll start okay. over here, go fast and slow once or twice, come over, up and down, up and down, move the peak, and right. just kind of give a, a broad, move everything around. Okay. Well, that's cool. All right. play with the uh, volume of the boost too much actually the boost is on we're going to turn that off going forward but and again that's just it's still sensitivity it's mm-hmm. just maybe pushing the amp when we need it to uh that was band pass i believe so now we go to high pass look out <laughs> lot of control over the high pass and the band pass right as opposed to some of the ones we've looked mm-hmm. at like i feel like you can there's like sometimes it's his real am radio is sounding right. and like you can see using it as like a i don't know in a fun part or whatever but i feel like there's a lot there is i think you there. used the word um sculpting in one of the other videos you can definitely there's a lot of sounds in there mm-hmm. and it's funny because I bought this one a long time in a parking lot. This this was a it's either lot. from like one of the builders or manufacturers helping us out, or it's like a, a shady deal in a parking, in a parking lot. lot. <laughs> Sometimes it involves um, rain. <laughs> actually, and I think I bought this back either when or before we did the Leslie Sound series. Yeah. Like it just showed up on Craigslist. It was a super like the guy was giving it away, right. and I was like, done. Um, it's been waiting for this, and the first couple times I ever plugged it in, I feel like I understand it. A lot better tonight. And anyway, uh, that was high pass. The only thing we haven't done is the the mix. That would be interesting, maybe. Let's try that out. I'm trying to play. <laughs> Wee 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 w
That's cool because that's your dry signal and the band pass. So I felt like it was a little more, you got that kind of wah sound going on, but you still had Mm -hmm. a little fatter signal underneath. Right. It didn't get so thinned out. Right. So that's the Qtron Plus with the exception of the built-in effects loop. So you have a built-in effects loop, which puts your effect between the preamp of the pedal and the filter. If I understand that right. And I know, like we mentioned John Mayer earlier, I think he runs a Boss OC2 in this. And I was, we were totally intending on it. We both have one. Right. Just totally intending on doing that. And just <laughs> the other night, I was like, well, because mine's upstairs. It's upstairs in the garage on the board. At least mine's about 10 miles away. So I got a better excuse. But I pulled the Joker mm-hmm. octave from Love Pedal out. Right. And I was like, you know what? This is really cool. Um, and just as a side note, I went back and watched our episode on this pedal, the Joker Octave. I'll put a card up above. Should we go sit on the couch for the rest of the show? Do I want to put a card up above? <laughs> yes, you do. I'll put, it was episode two of PJ and yeah. the Beard. I think it was and Telly Savalas that said one time, you've come a long way, baby. So I think... Uh, it was brutal. It was. The watch. It was very punny, it's, b- yes. but but really not good. <laughs> <laughs> it's all around. It's yeah, not, not so good. So go watch that. Yeah. And enjoy. Mm-hmm. And laugh at us. Um... So, I, I mean, at least I hope we've come a long way. Put it that way. Anyway, so that pedal has an octave up and an octave down. In that video, the reason I went back and watched it is I wasn't really sure what that middle knob is doing. And right. I'm really not sure what that middle knob right. is doing now. We haven't come a long way with that yet. <laughs> Two years later, still don't know. <laughs> yeah. We know what the manual says from what we read in the video, but it just doesn't seem to do that. Right. So we're going to leave that up. Apparently, it's a dry signal. But if you take it all the way out, you still have a dry signal. It just enhances the dry signal. Okay. So we'll leave it up. All right. <laughs> First knob here is a high octave. Second knob is a no, low octave. Um, and I'm just going to click it on. Let Pat play. Okay. Click it on. And move some octaves around. Let's let's go back to kind of where we started. In that range. <laughs> Kind of like a, a sitar filter when you play the chord. Like. <laughs> if George Harrison used an envelope filter. Right. <laughs> so I think the thing to think about is the fact that you don't have to put an octave pedal in. You're right. So, like, what else could you put in mm-hmm. there? Could you put a drive, a fuzz, a delay, a reverb, you know, chorus, like, Leslie, tremolo? You know, what, I mean, what else could you put in that? That I mean, it, it opens up some pretty cool possibilities. Mm-hmm. And really isn't that... Sometimes they put those extra features in there, like, kind of, oh, that's a pain to use. But right. it's just a little effects loop. Right. Two extra cables. So, I think 
Did we miss anything? That's a Qtron Plus, I believe. Yeah. Dang it. So this is the point where we always like to pause and just say thank you to everybody that's watching. Thank you for taking the time to subscribe. Hit the like button. Uh, hit the notification bell. Leave comments down below. Go out to Instagram or Facebook. Uh, check out the new website that we have. It'll be a link below here or the address below. But it's a great place to check out the series. We try to put all the videos from one series in one place so you can just kind of see everything at one place instead of looking through playlists. And I think with that, I'm PJ on behalf of the beard, reminding no matter what you hear, you never have too much gear. Swag. <laughs>